Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and hear this out, this one is the most interesting one so far. Hey sir, data structure using Python or Java, which is better? Is data structure using Python not preferred by the FANG companies? Now I won't be beating around the bushes, let me clearly state this fact that any company which is at the FANG scale doesn't restrict you about usage of your programming language. I myself have cleared variety of these FANG level rounds using Python and variety of other languages as well. And one of my very close friend has recently cleared a FANG level interview and cleared all the data structure round in Swift, which is an odd choice of language. Yet there was no issue in that. Okay, hear this out. Data structure and algorithm is a foundational concept which everybody should learn, but this doesn't mean that you should learn a new programming language to learn the data structure. In the data structure and algorithm, simply saying, algorithm is a way of solving a problem by a variety of different ways, and then you pick out which is the most efficient way of solving a problem. So it doesn't really matter what language you are choosing to solve that particular problem. A problem which has a solution of O of n time complexity is going to remain O of n time complexity in Python, in Java, in C++ and in any other language too. Data structure and algorithm makes your foundation of programming much more stronger. And if you are moving to learn a new programming language just to learn DSA, you are making your foundation weak because you are not yet comfortable with that programming language. I've always been saying this, that when should you learn data structure and algorithm? My answer to this question has always been that first, make sure that your foundation of programming is strong. You are very comfortable with writing loops because in the algorithms, you'll be writing loops with three different ways or three different structure of solving a problem. And if you are not comfortable in writing loops and functions, you won't be doing much well in the data structure and algorithm. So always the steps are, First, make sure you're comfortable with your programming language, whatever that is. And after that, make sure that you build a couple of projects so that you are a little more comfortable with the programming language. And then start your data structure and algorithm. Data structure and algorithm looks very, very simple, but it has a lot of tricks and tips that makes you more efficient programmer. So learning it is always a good idea, but there is a right time to do it. And my always advice is build something, get comfortable with your programming language, and then learn DSA. And yes, I can openly say this, put this on YouTube in the public platform, that you can use any programming language to learn data structure, whether that's Swift, C++, C, Python, Java, Swift, JavaScript, even PHP. Any language works absolutely fine in order to learn data structure and algorithm. But if that is so, why this myth is floating around so much on every platform that you should only learn it with C or C++? I got a reason for that too. Let me explain. There are two additional things that you should know about. First, does this mean that there is no preferential treatment given to any programming language? No, it is not like that. Sometimes the preferential treatments are given, even at a big companies as well. Let me give you a couple of examples here. For example, let's just say OnePlus is a very big brand and this brand is in at the very initial phase. They are trying to make sure that their Android is compatible with their devices. In that case, they would prefer C++ programmers more and they would prefer a candidate that he clears his data structure and algorithm round in the C++ more preferably because that's their goal is. If some company is at the very start of phase, they are majorly on to the web application or something, they would always prefer some programmer which are having strong foundation in React or Angular or whatever the stack they are building up. So yes, sometimes there are preferential treatments and these preferential treatment also happen at the FANG scale because they also sometimes work on a very specific project and want their team with more efficient people in some or the other programming language. Everybody tries to save some cost and the programmer who is having these specific knowledge about that programming language related to the project are gonna save some cost. So yes, sometimes there are preferential treatments, but during the interviews, they know it, that if somebody can solve these problem in X programming language, learning the Y programming language is not gonna be a big deal. Of course, after all, loop is just a loop. Okay, so here is an interesting story that will clear up your idea about why so many people still recommend to learn data structure and algorithm with just C or C++. Let me tell you this. 
Usually, you're gonna see this advice that always learn data structure with C and C++ is gonna come up from people of my age, a couple of years, years here and there. And this is because all the people who are coming up from old school style of learning, including me, we have learned programming from the pre-video era. YouTube was not present at that time. At that time, the internet was not frequently available. Only the rich guys used to have internet. And on to top of that, those people were having the internet speed of 8 kbps. You heard it right, 8 kbps. And learning programming was not really that much common, which is right now here. We can only learn programming by either going to institute or by just books. And books were abandoned in just a C or C++ language. Finding a book on Perl or Python was like an exclusive that you have somehow got. And when somebody used to learn about data structure and algorithm, they have learned it, and myself including, we have learned it from just C or C++. And it was good practice at that time. The language were not much in abundance, and we only had restricted resources. That's why we came up with this idea that we have learned it with C and C++, so should you. Which is not correct. Things are changing around. Now, on top of that, it was also very clear that languages like Python are getting much more popularity. Now, the whole idea of learning the data structure and algorithm with just C++ or C was so that people don't cheat. Now, hear me out. What does this word cheat here mean? Now, in the languages like Python, there are some packages which you can just import, and these packages will help you so much in learning the data structure via linked list or doubly linked list. But the whole idea was that you don't actually import any package. You build everything from the core so that you learn and learn the foundation of the programming language. And that was the idea, that with the C++, the packages are not so much available, so you always learn data structure with C and C++. And hence, this notion came up popular that you should always learn it with C and C++, which is not true. You can learn data structure and algorithm with any language. The whole idea behind it is that whether you use Python or Swift or even PHP, just make sure you don't try to cheat. You don't try to come up with some package that can make your life easier while learning something about linked list. Make sure you do it absolutely from scratch, regardless of what programming language you are using. And yes, in case you are wondering, this 8 kbps, yes, that I'm telling you about the good era of the programming. It used to be much more lower speed than that. And now imagine yourself to download a software which can run your code in Python or Perl or any other language at 8 kbps. And that's where most of our patience comes from. Okay. So now you have all the facts with you, why somebody is recommending you to learn a data structure with this language or that language and why is it saying so. I would recommend you to learn data structure and algorithm with any language where you're already feeling comfortable. And that's the whole truth and fact that I've placed in front of you. Now picking it up or not is totally your decision. But one thing you can also consider deciding is hitting that subscribe button. I'm going to surely catch you up in the next video and make sure you're also connected with me on Instagram because that's where all the fun happens. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video. Good job. Get my no prop. Hit my line, you're irking me. I hit that woosah. No, I don't got perks on me. I sleep good on God. Spend that money, make it reappear. Ta-da. I've been getting paid. I've been needing.